In today's show, we are answering the question, are you a pro? We'll dive deep into that. Let's go. This is for the change makers and rain makers that are known for their leadership in business, their community, and the world. This is for those smart, classy ladies that can hold their ground in the boardroom, but still know how to have fun and live life to its fullest. Get ready to prioritize what matters most, maximize your potential, and experience the joy of owning a business that enables you to thrive. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode number five of the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for being on the journey with me. Whether you are new to the show or you've been listening for a while, welcome, welcome. I'm Giovanna Lady J. Ellison, your certified leading business coach and your friend along the journey as you become everything that God has destined for you to be and maximize your potential and expand your influence. Today, we're diving deep into a question question that I pose to some of my VIPs, and that is, are you truly a pro? Now, this is really good because let me lay the framework and then we'll dive deep into what some listeners responded and what their responses were. So consequently, if you have a question or a comment for the podcast, feel free to hop on over to my website at Javana.com and just click on the podcast page. There you'll see all the details where you can subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, as well as submit a question for the show. Okay, so let's dive in deep today. So at what point in your career did you become a pro? Now, I know that so many of you are leading ladies, you are crushing it in life and business, and you didn't get there just by not doing anything. You got there very intentionally, taking steps every day to lead toward your success. But you know what? I am careful with that word pro, because the way I see it, none of us have fully arrived. No matter how much success, no matter how many wins, there is still always something to learn. In fact, the more wins I experience, the more I realize how much more there is to learn. Wins humble me, and so do lessons learned. I'm always a work in progress. I may have mastered some areas of my life and career, but that just means that there are so many other new horizons and levels to reach. So my question for you is, how do you see it? Are you a pro or are you a growing master pro of your field who is a consistent student. And the way I like to say it is I am a pro at learning. I am a pro who has never stopped growing and learning. That's a requirement of being a pro, isn't it? It's someone who is constantly availing themselves to coaching, to training, to leadership development, becoming the best person that you absolutely can be. And so I want to share some of the responses that some of the VIPs had to share. Absolutely phenomenal responses. And I'm going to start off with David Hancock. David is the founder and CEO of Morgan James Publishing. Phenomenal book publishing company. If you have a book to publish, I highly recommend that you check out Morgan James Publishing. But this is what David shared. I am always a student in a never ending quest. I think you can be a pro for 30 seconds, but then someone will pass you. So yes, you need to be a pro at constant learning just as much as a pro in your field. And then he goes on to give a great example that I absolutely love. A seagull flies in circles in the sky, looking for food in an endless quest. When it finally finds the food, the seagull lands and eats its fill. When it has completed the meal, it then returns to the sky only to fly in circles again, searching for food, although it has eaten. Humans have only one comparable instinct, the need for constant learning. Nurture this instinct and you will achieve great success. So that just nailed it on the head, right? We've got to be constant learners. We've got to be constantly learning and growing and coming to that place where we never fully arrive, but we are always constantly getting to where we want to be. So a great book that will encourage you to embrace that is called Performance Driven Thinking. 
a challenging journey that will encourage you to truly embrace what it means to thrive, to truly embrace the greatest performance of your life. And so I highly recommend that you check that out. And it is by David Hancock and Bobby Kipper. So make sure that you check that book out. It is really going to bless you. So let me share a few other things that people shared. So Edwin said, when you stop learning is when you start dying. So keep learning, all right? Kyle says, definitely a consistent student. Love that. Now, Wendy shared something I absolutely absolutely love. Listen to this. Wendy says she's been in her industry for almost a decade and considers herself a pro, not because she knows everything, but because constant learning and development is a part of being a professional, especially with all the changes being made to the tax code. And Wendy is in the financial business. It would be very unprofessional and possibly detrimental if I didn't continue my education. I love that, right? Because even as we continue to reach new levels of success and reach new heights, none of us fully arrive, right? We learn one thing and then, oh, there's something else to learn. We learn one thing and, oh, look over here, there's something else to learn. So we have to constantly grow and evolve. I don't know about you, but if you were having open heart surgery, would you want to go to a doctor who the last time he cracked open a book was in 1985? Exactly. I don't think so. No, you want someone who is on the cutting edge of the latest developments of the latest medical research of what there is to know out there, because you truly want to get in a place of saying, you know what? I want the best of the best. And as leading ladies, as leading at high achievers that you are, you've got to be constantly learning. That's why I highly encourage you to have your own coach. If you don't already have a coach, make sure that you're invested in that. Feel free to check out my own coaching services if you like. Even my Leading Ladies Mastermind, which is my business accelerator. It's a high-level group for women who are at the top of their field in business or even aspire to be. But when you change the people that you are around, when you change the people that you allow to speak into your life and be around other successful people, guess what? You'll rise to that level as well because the company that you keep will change everything for you, right? You are going to be the same person you are today five years from now Minus, except for the differentiating factor is the books that you read and the people that you hang around. Those two things are absolutely essential. So make sure that you are surrounding yourself with not just a whole bunch of uh, stuff on the internet, but with real people who will challenge you to grow and who will challenge you to thrive. Speaking of thriving, if you're not already a member of my free Facebook group called Thrive, make sure that you join that. It's my free Facebook community for my podcast listeners, as well as my VIP email subscribers, where we have a chance to get in there and help serve you at an even higher level and introduce you to other programs and services along the way that can catapult your success. So make sure that you check that out. It's called Thrive on Facebook. Now, let me move on to some other things that some people shared. Thomas says, great discussion. I have retired twice. He's now in his 60s, and he continues to read, learn, and grow. He once heard John Maxwell advise leaders to rinse and repeat, and he's been doing that for decades. So I love that. Kathy says, always need to learn, learn, learn. And also she agrees with him. And the caveat for her, though, is that in the past, she kept learning and learning, and learning, and learning, and use that as an excuse not to be doing. Okay, let's stop right there for a moment. Let me just say this. Inspiration without action is pretty much useless, right? You can get inspired all day long. You can listen to this podcast and others and just get walk away feeling great about yourself. But if you don't implement, if you don't take action, if you don't schedule something on your calendar to actually do and implement to have the success that we're teaching you to have, guess what? It doesn't amount to anything, right? It amounts to you just simply being inspired and encouraged. Now, while those things are good, if you want to see lasting change in your life, you've got to implement. You've got to actually do things that will help be the midwife 
to the change in your life. And I love the analogy of a midwife because the midwife is positioned to help you bring something into the world. When we think of a baby and a woman is pregnant with a baby, you know, that midwife is there to help her push. That midwife is there to help her deliver her promise, which is that baby. Now, in the other instance, we can take you and let's say you are pregnant with purpose. You're pregnant with promise and so many great things that are inside of you. Well, if you don't have the right midwife, if you don't have the right support system around you, then pushing that thing out, delivering it is going to be a challenge because you're not surrounded by the right people. But when you surround yourself with people that will absolutely encourage you to thrive and to go to the next level, it can change everything. All right, let's move on to some other comments. Tanya says that she's a career coach and she actually took it another level and she looked up the word pro in the dictionary. Now, I love this. She said that there are two meanings for advancing and projecting forward. Advancing means moving forward and projection means building out or pushing out with force. Thinking on the word projection, she says it means that I am not going along with the everyday crowd, but I'm pushing myself out of the norm and I am taking the risk that will lead to a place where it is uncomfortable for me. However, this rough place builds me up and gets me ready to jump. I love that. Builds me up and gets me ready to jump, to parachute into my calling. Parachuting will be scary for me. Therefore, I am grateful for this podcast and Thrive, thank you, Tanya, where support and encouragement secures a safer landing. Therefore, with the help of this group and this podcast, I will keep advancing myself and pushing myself to the uncomfortable zone that God has prepared for me. Love it, love it, love it. Absolutely. That's what we have to do. We have to surround ourselves with the right people that will help push us out of our comfort zone. All right. And then we had a few others, Janice and Deanne. Now, Janice says that she's a growing master. She's a married woman coach that married her junior high school sweetheart and will be celebrating 40 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations, Janice. But she also says she's still not a pro. She is a growing pro, right? Which is the premise of what we're saying in all of this. We are all continually learning and growing. Her coaching business is the marriage major, which means that she is still majoring. I love that. And you know, I, I want to pivot here and really give a shout out to my bishop, Bishop Charles E. Blake, pastor of West Angeles Church. You know, he is phenomenal in so many ways and just one of the most humble and integral leaders that you'll ever want to meet. But something I love about Bishop Blake when he does the altar call and, you know, he always does the altar call every single Sunday. And he is very adamant about how that is the most important part of the Sunday service. It's not about how well the service went or about how dynamic the preaching was or how good the choir sounded. No, at the end of the day, it's about those souls being saved. And when they come to the altar, one of the things I love about Bishop is he says, we are growing together and I would love to grow with you. I'm not done learning and growing and I would love to grow with you. Someone as successful as that who says something like that, who, whose members of his church include people like Stevie Wonder and Angela Bassett, Denzel Washington, Magic Johnson. These amazing people come to Bishop Blake's church because not only is he a man of the word and humble and full of integrity, but he is still growing. We're all growing and learning together. And you know, it takes a, it takes a confident leader It takes a secure person. It takes a humble leader to be able to say, I'm still growing. You know, some people get to a certain level of success and they say, oh, I've got a seven figure business. You know, we're, I've got a wonderful team. Life is awesome. Life is grand. I don't need to do anything else. You know, come on. No, they didn't get to where they are by not implementing and by not holding themselves accountable to go to that next level of success. It's absolutely essential that you keep growing. You know, I heard a statistic the other day and I can't remember the exact percentage, but it really, it really saddened me. And it was something like more than half of the population will never crack open a book after they graduate high school. Over half. 
Are you kidding me? Right? <laughs> oh, now for so many of you that are listening, you know, you're high achievers, you're leaders. And so I'm sure that, you know, you've probably got a book nearby you right now. But the truth of the matter is that so many people stop. They get to that commencement and they think that that's a ticket to stop learning or to stop growing. But the very word commencement means to begin, to commence, right? Let's start that next chapter. Let's start that next level. So as you grow and as you become a a, a pro and a growing master at being a pro, remember that it's very important that you don't overwhelm yourself. Okay. (laughs) So I can talk about this one. So because I love learning so much, there was one point in my business where it felt like I was on everybody's email list. I had every book under the sun, it felt like, although I know that's not true. And I felt like, my goodness, I had so much information coming at me because I I loved it. I wanted to learn and not just learn, like Kathy said, but implement, right? That is key. I wanted to learn and I wanted to implement. And I did both. But even in doing that, I had to be selective of what I chose to learn. So let me pause here for a moment and talk about being selective about what you choose to learn. My dear, precious, beautiful leading lady, you cannot attend everything, read everything, listen to everything. You will burn yourself out if you try to follow everyone, like everyone, It just isn't possible. So be very selective about who you choose to learn from. Maybe you say, okay, in the year 2019 or the year 2020, depending on when you're listening to this, I'm going to choose to follow two coaches and that's it. Or I'm going to choose to read two books a month and that's it. Or I'm going to put myself on a podcast budget and I'm only going to listen to five podcasts a week. You know, the brain will get tired. There is such a thing as brain fatigue (laughs) and I've experienced it, right? Anybody else? (laughs) There is such a thing as brain fatigue. And if we're not careful, you'll, you'll, you'll burn out and you'll overwhelm yourself. So be kind to yourself, take care of yourself. And that includes taking care of your mind and only allowing so much information in at one time. Okay, so let's move on to a few of the final comments. So Deanne says that she is a growing master as well. Education is always changing. New research and experiences shape my knowledge. She says, I am growing continually. It's so true. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I do not know. Isn't that true? The more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. And you know something else? the more open we become to what others have to say and the more humble we become. It seems like the more you learn, the better listener you ought to become because you really have an opportunity to see where people are or to at least hear where they are at any given moment. And so continue to learn. Be a pro at learning. Don't just buy courses and have them sit on your desktop. Don't just, you know, attend events and go through the notebook only at the event. Schedule time to go back and learn. Schedule time to go back and implement. So let me tell you something I'm doing right now, and it is super fun. I have scheduled on my calendar something called a journal Sabbath. So every Sunday after church, you know, my husband is a pastor. So after we're done going to five or six services on Sundays, I take time to quiet myself and I get a journal that I have written years ago, years ago. Now I have a whole bookshelf full of journals and you know what? They did me good while I was writing them, but I realized that if I just let them sit there on the shelf and not go back and read how far God has brought me from, Hallelujah. And I go back and listen to or read where I was back in 2012 or you know what I was thinking back in 2014 or whatever the year may be. It does you a world of good to go back and reflect. 
Now, this won't be for everybody. Some people are, you know, some people don't want to go back and read their journals. They, you know, they'd rather not have those. If they were bad memories, maybe they don't want to go back and rehash that. But what you've got to do is remember that you can absolutely do this. Go back, refresh and reflect and look on some of those journals because as you do that, it's going to make a world of difference to go back and see how far you've come and how God has brought you and how prayers have been answered and how things have been changed for you. So as you do that, it can make such a world of difference. So my friend, I pray that this podcast was encouraging to you that you will become a master pro, that the pro that you are, that you will own it, not just own it, but continue to learn, continue to grow and be around people who will push you and help you to excel to the very top. I am so glad that you chose to listen to today's show. Listen, don't forget, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast so that I can send you fresh episodes every single week, everywhere podcasts are played. You can subscribe, Apple, Google, Stitcher Radio, we're everywhere. So make sure that you subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, stay focused, stay faithful, and remember that the best is yet to come just for you. Thanks for listening to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show at www.javana.com.